Okay, it's 7 o'clock and it seems that they stopped doing much noise and we are coming back to the Michaelis Menten equation. And here we need to repeat the equation itself. So we have enzyme plus substrate being converted into the complex of enzyme and substrate and then separate enzyme plus product. So of course, as all chemical reactions, they go into in both directions. But for the enzyme plus product, formation of enzyme and substrate is almost impossible. And if you remember, we had this substrate being converted into the product with a threshold somewhere here. And this is energy here. So this difference between these two values was the energy of activation, while the uh, enzymes would decrease this energy of activation and make it possible to perform the, the chemical reaction. So coming back from this product into this substrate will of course require the going back through this whole energy. And the possibility of such jump back is very very low, that's why we really assume that this do not happens here. So we have K1. So K1 shows the constant for the rate of reaction uh, of enzyme and substrate forming the complex of enzyme and substrate. Then K2 is the formation of the product from this complex uh, and we are left with enzyme and products themselves. And finally we have the third reaction here. It is the dissociation of this enzyme substrate complex into the enzyme and substrate. So we mark it as K-1. Okay, so what we have here, we have rates. And rates, they have the formula of constant some constant times the concentrations of the substrates. So for the first reaction, which is the formation of the um, enzyme substrate complex, it will be equal to, um, let's call it R1, would be equal to K1 times E times concentration of substrate. Okay, so this is the formation of the complex um, enzyme substrate. What are the ways to um, get rid of this complex? So we have the K2 here and K1 here. So ES can dissociate onto enzyme and substrate or it can proceed with the formation of enzyme plus product. Okay, so for R2 we have K2 times ES plus K minus 1 times ES. So this is the um, disintegration of our complex. Okay, so here, because we have ES, ES here, we can have it like this. So ES times K2 plus K minus 1. Okay, so what we have here now is that the formation of the um, enzyme substrate complex would be equal to its disintegration. So this R1 will be equal to this R2. And in this case we have K1 times E times S equal to K2 plus K minus 1 times ES. So we have here um, something that we can move to one side, so all constants should be um, going to the same side. So let's move the K1 to the divisor of this side. So we would have ES E times S divided by ES equal to K2 plus K minus 1 divided by K1. And this part is actually called Michaelis constant, so it's a capital K. Um, 
So this is Michaelis constant. So what we do here, so I'm going to remove everything here to start with the blank page. Okay, what we had on the previous page was concentration of uh, free enzyme plus uh, times concentration of substrate divided by the complex concentration. And this all is equal to the constant of Michaelis. Okay, so what we know from here is these two parts, they are related to the total amount of enzyme and it is equal to E plus ES. Okay, so we have uh, these two parts and if you take um, this substrate, so it is almost um, the same as total, or well, let's do it like this, as total. So why we make this assumption that they are almost equal, although we know that some part or some amount of the substrate is being bound to the complex. It is because the amount of substrate is always much, much bigger than the amount of the enzyme. Okay, so in this case we make this assumption that S total is equal to the S from the denominator. Okay, so what we have here now is that um, we can put this part uh, to our equation. Okay, so to understand how much here we have, it, we need to um, subtract the ES from both sides. So it would be concentration of enzyme equal to concentration enzyme total minus complex enzyme. And now we could put this whole part to our upper side. So it will be equal to E total minus ES times substrate concentration divided by the complex concentration. Why we did it? Because we want to remove this ES and this all is equal to Michael's constant. Okay, so we have to open these braces. So what we do, we have E total times S minus ES times S divided by ES. Okay, so what we have next, we will need to divide both parts here and here by this ES. Okay, so what we have in the end, we have ET times E mm, times S divided by ES minus S equal to constant of Michaels. And move this uh, Mm, substrate concentration to the mm, right side and we are left with uh, ET S divided by ES equal to KM um, plus S. Okay, I'm going to delete these two and again we had E total times S divided by ES equal to KM plus S. Okay, so what we could do, we could actually move this ES here on this place and vice versa put this Michaelis um, to the uh, divisor. So what we are left with is ES equal to total enzyme times the concentration of substrate divided by constant Michaelis plus substrate concentration. Okay, so we have this first um, common part and now we are talking about two things. So we need to talk about the maximal speed or maximal rate of the reaction 
and the rate of the reaction that we are going to determine for this particular concentration. Okay, so the Vmax, uh, if we start with this, would be equal to K2 times Es. And you remember that uh, we actually wrote it as a part of this um, common part because it is related to the um, disintegration of our complex. Okay, so because it is maximal speed, then every single enzyme uh, in the solution must be occupied with the substrate. So in this case, this part will be equal to the total amount of, of the enzyme. So we could rewrite this equation to K2 times uh, total, um, total enzyme. So what we have for V0, again we have K2 times Es, and because we are determining the rate of product formation, at any given time, so we are not taking the maximal or minimal uh, concentration of the product, sorry, uh, the substrate enzyme complex, we just take any possible one, so we take it as here, and ES here would be equal to this common part, so we rewrite it in our mm, replacing this ES. So we have K2 times total times S divided by Michaelis constant plus S like this. So what is cool here is that this part for the Vmax, we could see it here too. And we rewrite it again, Vmax times S divided by Km plus S. Okay, so here we actually obtained the uh, michaelis menten equation, which looks like V0 equal to Vmax times the concentration of substrate divided by constant Michaelis plus the concentration of the substrate. So what is the physical um, meaning of this Km? Let's determine it. I'm going to delete again. Okay, we know that V0 is equal to Vmax times S Km plus S. Okay, so this is the equation that we found in the previous part. Now let's talk about this physical meaning of the um, Michaelis constant. So what we have, we have two rates of the reaction, and then we have the substrate concentrations. So for the first assumption, let's take that the concentration um, of the substrate would be equal to the Michaelis constant, so Km equal to S. So in this case we have V0 equal to Vmax times S S plus S, like this. So it will be 2S and of course we can cancel them and in this case we obtain V0 equal to Vmax divided by 2. So of course as you understand this is uh, the concentration, so constant, Michaelis constant, is equal to the concentration at which the rate of reaction would be equal to half of the maximal rate of this reaction. And on the graph, so we see the graph, and the max would be here. Of course, this is the rate of the reaction, and here we have the concentration. Okay, so at point, let's say, x, we have the reaching of our maximal um, rate. Now let's determine at which 
point we have the half of this rate. Okay, so at this point we drop it, we drop the perpendicular to our um, concentration axis and we obtain um, y uh, concentration. So y would be equal to constant of Michaelis and at this particular concentration the rate of the reaction will be half of the maximal. Okay, so this is how to derive um, the the equation itself and to explain the meaning of the Michaelis constant.